Hello everyone, I'm here sitting at the piano, but I'm not practicing today. Maybe I will later. He didn't practice all day. I'm going to talk about braille music. It's going to be brief, or as brief as I can, but I'll try to explain as many things as possible. So, first of all, what is braille? Well, braille is the system that blind people use to read. We're talking about dots that one can put their finger on and feel. Essentially, you can think of them as little bumps. So, a basic braille cell is this matrix of six points. We're talking about two columns of three dots each. So, on the left, vertically, we have dots one, two, and three, and on the right, uh, also vertically, of course, we have dots four, five, and six. If you think about it, we have a total of 63 possible uh, patterns. Um, 64 if we count a pattern with no dots, which is a space, which we also use. With Braille, uh, music and text and numbers is going to look exactly the same. So if you see a page of writing or a page of music, you would never be able to tell the difference unless you know how to read it. We are going to focus on music today. Um, we won't talk about everything else because it would take way too much time. In music, we have one basic sign for each note. So let's look at those. Um, if we do a C major scale, we have C, which is dots one, four, and five. Then we have D, which is dots one and five. E, which is dots one, two, and four. F, which is one, two, four, five. G, which is one, two, five. A, which is two, four. And B, which is two, four, five. These basic signs alone represent eighth notes. Now, if we want to change the note value, we have to add other dots. In this case, since all of these uh, basic signs are composed of dots between one, two, four, and five, we can only play with dots three and six. So the way it works is, uh, we're gonna take the example of a C. When we look at the basic sign for C, which as we said was one, four, five, if we add dot six under it, so one, four, five, six, we have a C quarter note. So this would be a quarter note C. Then if we have one, four, five, three, we will be talking about a half note. And if we have one, four, five with both three and six, then it's a whole note. Now you might be thinking what happens with uh, everything else, 16th notes, anything really that we haven't talked about. Since we are essentially out of signs that we can do, you have to look at the context. For example, let's say you have a time signature of 2-4. If you see a bunch of whole notes, obviously that's not possible. So that would mean that they are 16th notes. The basic sign for a C whole note, which as we said is 1-4-5-3-6, can also be interpreted as a 16th note, depending on context. It sounds a little bit complicated, it's not really that complicated because when there are so many whole notes, you know, it has to be uh, 16th notes. We do the same with the half note sign. So when we see many of those um, in a given context, it means we're talking about 30 second notes. And again, it would go on with the um, uh, quarter note sign for uh, 64th notes, if that makes sense. Now, it's important to understand that in Braille, clefs don't really exist. They do exist, we have a sign for each clef, you know, a G clef, an F clef, but they don't really mean anything because in print, when you see music, you see notes in a staff. So depending on the clef, uh, the same note might actually mean one thing or another. But in braille, each sign means an exact note, so clefs don't really mean anything. At the same time, there are signs that will indicate, for example, in a piano score, the left hand and the right hand. So um, now we will see we have a sign for the right hand, which uh, in this case is two signs uh, put together. So first dots four and six, 
and then dots three, four, and five. And then for the left hand, we would have dots four, five, and six, and then dots three, four, and five. So as you can see, they are related. Now we have signs for each note, and we know their values, but how do we know where the note is? Because there are many C's on the piano, for example. Again, in print, you will see that on the staff, depending on where the note is, you can tell which octave you're supposed to play it in. In braille, we need signs for each octave. So in front of a note, we put a sign that tells us which octave we're gonna play it in. Again, continuing with the example of a C. Uh, when it's a middle C, in front of the note, we're going to put dot five. If we go higher than that, so the octave higher, it's going to be dots four and six before the note. So we put four and six and then the note. An octave lower, it's dots four, five, and six. And again, we could keep going. Uh, we can cover all octaves. Uh, there's a sign for each octave on the piano. Now that we have looked at octaves, uh, you can see that whenever we want to put any information that relates to a given note, we always put it before the note. So before we actually see the note sign, we might have many things. We have, as we saw, the octave sign. There's different signs for fingerings, dynamics, uh, accents. Anything is possible. The problem is it can be very, very long to read because before you actually see the note, you can have, I don't know, uh, six or seven uh, different signs which means Braille is slow to read. It's a completely linear way of writing music. So it's almost like you're telling me thing by thing what I need to play. The way we organize a score is usually by maybe two measure passages, maybe sometimes three, it depends on how much space it takes. Uh, so you would see a right hand sign, for example, and then you would read like those two measures. Then you would go to a new line and you would see a left hand sign and those same two measures. It's very slow to read. In a complex score, you really have to count to see how uh, the two hands fit with each other because you don't really see the vertical picture uh, of the music with some notes on top of others. So the last thing we're going to look at um, is a little passage here from the very famous Mozart Sonata in C major, K545. We have two measures written in Braille and we have those same two measures in print so that you can see that Braille takes more space. So it's just these two measures. I think you forgot to play three eighth notes there on the left hand. So of course a Braille score takes lots of space, lots of space. Um, now you can also see a regular score and there you have the same score in braille now you can have an idea uh, when you are you know getting a complete chopin edition how big that might be um, in braille i hope you found this video helpful um, i tried to explain things as efficiently as i could although it's not easy to do it if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to the channel or like the video and share and I hope to see you on the next one. I don't even like Pringles anymore.